if you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining our crew. Here's the quick rundown. Sick of COVID lockdowns, I quit my job, packed up our Melbourne apartment and with my boyfriend John, purchased a yacht called Takana. Our dream is to sail Takana all the way up to the Great Barrier Reef in North Queensland. But there's one small thing. We only have a few weeks sailing experience. Now, despite this incy wincy hurdle, a few hiccups along the way, we've so far managed to sail to Kana from Melbourne to Coffs Harbour, a 790 nautical mile trip in exactly two weeks. We've arrived on a weekend, which comes with an added bonus. We made it to Coffs and we are just walking to the market. The smell. Well, every Sunday, huh? <laughs> every Sunday they have markets. <laughs> and it just so happened to be that we arrived on a Saturday and we've woken up to this beautiful surprise. John's been craving a coffee, a Portuguese tart and Goslamet. But the most important thing about today is that I am going to buy a fishing rod for my birthday. Can you hold my tart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the go with the border? I can't explain it. It's convoluted. Basically, we left Sydney. Just we... Hang on, let me start again. <laughs> We've left Sydney just over a week ago, and since that time, there's been an outbreak in Sydney. And now Queensland is saying that they won't let you in unless you've been out of Sydney for 14 days. So we have to wait another week before Queensland will let us in. So we've stopped off in Coffs Harbour to do a few errands and to make the most of it while we wait for our 14 days to tick over. Hopefully it doesn't get worse in Sydney because if it does and the whole state locks down maybe Queensland won't let us in but we'll just have to play it by ear. John and I just spent a fortune. <laughs> what are you going to do when we catch a fish? <laughs> Being in a marina is a true luxury. Fresh water and electricity is free flowing and we're protected from the rolling swell. A berth cost us $300 a week and this is our first day in a marina since leaving Melbourne. The luxury of being in a marina means that we can use the microwave whenever we want without having to put the inverter on. But what I was going to tell you is when we first bought Takana, it didn't have a microwave. We actually put this one in which is actually quite ironic because we didn't have a microwave in our apartment in Melbourne. While we had nowhere to go, we felt like we were getting squeezed with COVID cases to the south and now north of us. But this is really important oh. because um, this virus is around and... Queensland is going into a three day lockdown from 6 p.m. tonight, but we had so many boat jobs to get on top of. So this was a great opportunity to stop and get some serious and minor jobs done on Takana. Oh, I need a keys. Terrible catch. From winch maintenance to the washing, it was time to practice gratefulness. The smallest things matter, like the passerby who can see you struggling. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And while walking to the laundromat, I guess since moving on board, there's a lot more time to think and not be sidetracked by work, the nine to five and all the noise around us. Meanwhile, John was on his own quest. Waiting at the bus stop with our good friend, the winch. He's going in for a service. Drilled out these holes and he's put bushes in. I didn't ask him what material he was going to use. He used steel, which obviously rusts, but he said oh. bronze was too soft and stainless would bind up. So I don't know. What do you all think about the choice of materials for these bushes? Will they rust? Time will tell. Mm. It's also a bit tight, like it like it's a little bit tight now because he's put a flat under there to stop the bush from dropping out. So I don't know if that'll be a problem anyway, we'll find out. How much was it? 
$250. The moment of truth, huh? It might rain, it might be a bad time to do it. This may not be a good look, but John insists we work in the rain. It's not raining. It is raining. We were shoring up the Bimini with more steel reinforcements. It was a job on our list back in Melbourne, but we just ran out of time. I feel like we were supposed to do this job about two months ago. Just didn't get around to it. Losing light. After sunset, I went online to reply to all your comments when one of you legends pointed out we'd been saying staunchens instead of stanchions. We um, just found out we'd been saying staunchens and... Well, maybe. Is it staunchens or know. stanchions? I don't know. Cut the glasses. So, Kieran, thanks for setting us straight on that one. Back to boat jobs. I think this is, like, it's just sick of flex. It's not proper bathroom sealant and that's why it's all like flaking and perished and stuff. And the problem with it was that dust and hair was all getting stuck in it. It was gross. Like it's like gooey like paint, wet paint. I think John is going to use silicon sealant and it's going to take about three days to dry John yeah? No showering in that main bathroom for three days. You've eaten way too much chocolate today. It's out of control. You just had a bowl past all, you fatty. Okay, back to work. <laughs> the next day, we walked it off, admiring the beaches and talented surfers here during a one hour trek to a Coffs Harbour icon. The big banana! <laughs> She's big. Supposedly, this was the first big thing in Australia. Erected in 1964, yes, this was where Australia's fetish for big things started. Australia is home to the big prawn, koala, ram, lobster. I mean, there are around 150 big things now spread out over the whole country. And given bananas are bad luck on boats, we ordered up big, demolishing the big banana breakfast and a banana fritter for dessert. Yes, there is a banana in there. While the local economy once relied on banana harvesting, blueberries, fishing and tourism has taken over here in Coffs Harbour. John just said I'm the passenger of his boat. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm always working and you're always on your computer, TikToking, Instagramming. Clearly, that's not true. I'm a massive help. Can you just clean that? And when it comes to sheaves and steering cables, I'm happy to get my hands dirty. Oh, hang on. Just. Ugh. John and I make a good team. What's happened with our steering? The sheaths are worn out. And what does that mean for people who are non-technical? You could think of them as pulleys that the steering cables run on. The holes on the center of them, like you could think of it like an axle, has worn into the pulley so that they don't run straight and they wobble all over the place. How do I shorten this tripod? We work to our strengths. More complicated than fixing the boat. The steering cable, we're on the starboard side, looking into the port side, the steering cable comes out round the bottom, and then that appears to go to that bottom pulley over there, and then up over the helm, down over the helm, and then from around the bottom of that pulley to the bottom of this pulley, up over the port side, down the starboard side, round this pulley, and then that goes to the top side of the quadrant, it's slack, but it should be going to the top groove and then tied to the port side. John actually found some pretty significant issues with the steering system that was overlooked by our surveyor before we had even purchased Takana. Being a critical system... And again? We had to get onto it right away. Radio. Ready? Okay. Next one. Ready? Okay. Next one. We were in Coffs Harbour for a total of 10 days waiting it out before we could cross the border into Queensland. Tight spaces. I'm trying to cook chicken and leek pie. Hang on, John is in the engine bay. We'll turn the tap off. 
there's ducting in there that circulates air around the engine compartment and there's an exhaust fan which creates a slight negative pressure in there which basically stops the hot engine smells from escaping from the engine compartment into the aft berths so the fans died so we just bought a new one and it's pretty much just unplug the old one plug the new one in which is pretty easy i'm actually interested to know if people are more interested to see you replacing a fan or me cooking chicken and leek pie Chicken and leek pie. Do you reckon? I'm hungry. <laughs> Comment below. Can you... Just be careful. Is it getting hot that, behind you? Can you grab you? that screwdriver, the flat one? Yeah. See if you can prise that by putting it in the hole. Pull that bar. It's pretty much just unplug the old one, plug the new one in, which is pretty easy. It's, it's hard because you need like 10 hands. I need like one screwdriver here. To... I'm really worried you're going to poke your eyeball out. John's just putting detergent on it. Good idea. I find the organic one works the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm maybe, just taking care of the sea too. turtles, hey? Can you put a bit of water on there as well? That actually yeah, wasn't you... a promotion for organic. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Just wet it a bit. Right, if that works. Oh my God. We got it! We bloody got it! Yes! Alright, it's not on yet. My hair dryer has a purpose on this boat. Like a real purpose, other than just drying my hair. The fact that you're even using it makes me happy. Okay. Whoa! That is so loud! I don't think it's ever worked. Maybe you wouldn't hear it over the engine anyway. No, I definitely didn't hear that. Anyway, that'd be good save us smelling engine smells. So when I cooked the chicken, there was a heap of broth left over. Instead of throwing that out, I'm going to be making a soup with it. So I've added a can of coconut milk and some egg noodles. And I'll also put a few veggies in there too. So we got to experience the markets twice. The second time I spotted a sea shepherd stand and had to say hello. There were so many whales up the coast and I knew the organisation did so much to protect them. And there are so many whales off the coast right now, but it's not here that you're worried about, I'm assuming. Well, it's everywhere. Anything related to the ocean, anything related to marine life, locally and globally. Sea Shepherd is a global organisation. Whether it's here in Coffs Harbour, Australia nationwide or the, the planet, Sea Shepherd are concerned about what's happening to the ocean. Yeah, an international movement. Yeah, it's not just saving the whales. Obviously a big problem now is um, there's marine plastic and ghost nets. But there's other things like um, illegal fishing off the west coast of Africa. Because fish populations have been overexploited around Europe, around Southeast Asia, Foreign industrial fishing vessels are coming from around the world and congregating in Africa, a place where there still is fish. We've got the Chinese and other um, countries now illegally fishing in the Galapagos Islands. A huge issue, huge. saving species like the Vaquita dolphins off the Baja Peninsula. There's a lot going on. And where can people go to support? Go to Sea Shepherd Australia website and all the information's on there. From volunteering locally to um, volunteering on the vessels, Thank you so much for explaining that. I think it needs a bit more um, publicity. Absolutely. There's not enough Absolutely. out there. Coming up next, a boat we had had our eye on before purchasing Takana turned up right next to us, demastered. The craziest thing has just happened. John. You had heard that a boat had run into trouble. I had an experience of a demasting. And no warning, bang! And I just turned around, I just saw the going on. Go on. That's what happened to Peter, who owns Cebu. He pulled up right next to us just the other day. He was in shock, but after a couple of days, he sat down with us and told us his story. Yeah. 